personally, um, my favorite app in the moment is an app habit tracking app on my phone. It just keeps me accountable. Um, I really like checking them off. Yeah, I think for me, it's Notion. I like to keep a track of what my weekly things are. Kind of like a habit tracking app, I would say. Anybody who wants to come off mute and share their favorite app? It looks, it looks like people don't use apps on this channel either that or uh, they don't have a favorite one. It's pretty difficult to, you know, narrow down one favorite one you, when you just, you know, ask which, which is your favorite app. I'm just thinking and browsing apps on my phone seeing which one I would say. Yeah. Which one do you use the most? Well, currently I think Netflix. Okay, nice. Tech ten that note, I would say like probably the weather app because just to check if we can go out. <laughs> oh yeah, that is good too. <laughs> yeah, I think Parameta can re relate to that. Yeah, <laughs> my mood, my work, my activities all depend on the weather. <laughs> How about you, Gaurav? I see a laughing emoticon that you posted. Which one is your favorite app? Or the most used app? Honestly, nothing comes to my mind. Uh, I've been working on redesigning Double Map for mm -hmm. uh, my interaction design methods class. So currently that is on my mind and it is terrible. So I have the least favorite one, but I don't have the favorite one. So it's the least yeah. favorite one is Double Map for sure. Yeah, definitely needs work. I agree. <laughs> okay. Okay, I think we can get started. If people join in, they'll follow up along. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So thank you guys all for being here with us today. And let me start off with a round of introductions of our team. Fatima, if you would like to share the deck. Thanks. So today we'll be covering how to do a design critique. And my name is Ebay and I'm currently studying in the undergraduate school, majoring in comprehensive design and digital interactive media, as well as minoring in marketing. And I'm aspiring to be a, a UX designer in the future. Over to you, Fatima. Thank you, Ibe. Uh, so I am Fatima Rafiki. I am a second year graduate student pursuing a master's degree in human computer interaction and design. Uh, previously, before this, I worked at um, as a UX engineer and then I transitioned into design. So that is also what I talk about. Um, I will be joining Juniper Networks as a UX designer this fall. Over to you, Parumita. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Parumita. I'm the lead intern for the web, web design team at CWIT. Uh, I'm also a second year graduate student in the human computer interaction and design program. We're super excited that you're all here today. Uh, this topic is something that is really uh, close to our hearts, I guess, especially during the interview season. I hope you all will benefit from it. So we're very excited to get started. Thank you, Parameta. So as part of CWIT, our mission is to empower women to be leaders in technical fields and to fully leverage technology to attain academic and professional excellence. Our teams hold a variety of events and workshops and everything design and technology related. So you're welcome to, to join our community by signing up for our mailing list, which will be put in the chat to get updates about upcoming events and workshops. You're also welcome to enjoy our uh, Facebook chat as well, and our group me. So without further ado, let's begin the workshop. So what is a critique? A design critique is an analysis of a design and how it can be improved and giving feedback on whether it meets its objectives. So why is a critique important? 
It is nearly impossible to improve a design without getting some feedback from other people. It can help you avoid mistakes, um, obtain a new perspective. It can also help you um, go through the early, uh, go through your early testing and uh, make iterations before you go too far into the project. It also encourages collaboration and communication, which are really important qualities of being a good UX designer or any designers. So there are three types of critique. The app critique, which we'll cover today, is obviously self-explanatory critiquing about an app, uh, usually some app that is pretty commonly used and widely known. Um, a portfolio review, which is going over your current work. Um, you have website critique, which um, just talks about critiquing um, the functionality and the appearances of a website. So today, like I said, we will be focusing on app critique. And the reason why is that right now is a really important application season for interviews and app critiques are a really important portion of that. So for app critiques, first you need to choose an app and your apps are actually will be selected by the interviewer during the interview. And apps associated with that company will be avoided during the critiques for um, purposes of, you know, you don't wanna say bad things about them during the company interview. So an app to expect for the critique, which I would highly recommend you look into before interviews are Google Maps, Apple Maps, Yelp, Uber, Lyft, Amazon, Spotify, and Medium. And next is device selection. So Android, iOS, Windows all have different operating systems. So you will have to let the recruiters know beforehand which one you will use. Um, the app critique interview framework that you should follow. There are two parts to it. The first would be UX audit, which encompasses concepts and technical details that you should critique as a designer. Uh, the second part is the approach, which focuses more on the structure of the critique, which Fatima will talk more about in the, later on in the slides. So first is the UX audit. Um, the first thing you should do is always identify the user in a problem space. Some questions you should go through are, what's the primary problem that the app is trying to solve? What's the mission statement of the company? What's the company's motivation to build the app? And who are the primary and the secondary users of the app? One example is Zoom. So for example, the Zoom is trying to solve the problem of um, long distance communication that's not in person. Um, Zoom app um, make this app for people who primarily works um, at home rather than in an office. However, because of the pandemic, the secondary users of this app is um, students who are using it for education. Thank you so much, eBay, uh, for introducing the initial structure and laying the uh, foundations. The second most important thing after you've defined the app's purpose and the users is focusing on the structure. Trying to make a really a uh, mental model of how the app functions and how you're going to navigate through the steps. So basically it's all about information architecture, which is another fancy term for navigation and different features and how all features fit in together. And is the user able to achieve the desired task? Uh, some questions to consider is uh, the navigation style, uh, why a hamburger menu, uh, why a tab bar, why a floating icon, icon at the bottom, uh, how do the buttons look like, and, um, um, and do these placement of the button make sense, or would it, ha would it have been easier if it would have been placed at a different location? Any platform guidelines that you point out might also be uh, very helpful whether the app is using material design or if it's iOS, it's using iOS guidelines or not. Uh, is it using semantic guidelines? So anything that is partic particular comes to your mind. And on the go, if you see some improvements that, can, uh, that the design team can do in that app that stands out to you, just feel free to point that out. One thing I definitely want to add here is critique is not about saying bad things about the app. It's also about noticing the good things that are there in the app. 
and always 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 take a couple of minutes to explore the app initially don't just jump into blabbering something and you know you don't have any idea about how and what you want to speak say tell the recruiter or person who you are doing the critique with can you give me a minute to walk through this and that will give you a lot more clarity the second thing that you can talk about uh, is you should talk about is ui design uh, how the design is consistent across different screens the typography the colors the icons um do the colors signify something for example it's a green here do they signify eco friendly furniture what what is the indication that the app is trying to give you then color selection and the relevance as i mentioned uh, design inclusivity for accessibility is it accessible by everybody or is it particularly focused towards a section of the user group and uh, how is the visual hierarchy are you able to focus on the right things are you able to scan through the app and just uh, find the most relevant information in a quick glance and how is the color contrast and visibility is it too low or maybe color blind people are not able to figure out figure that out or maybe you are out in the sun in a very bright light and you are not able to see anything in the app consider those things while you are critiquing and take time as i mentioned go through pauses analyze it and then speak then the next thing i'd say is interaction design as an interaction designer or a ux designer you should definitely talk about the animations how do the animations make you feel uh, are they distracting from you from the actual task are you just playing around uh, with the animations so i remember there was a time when i was using one of the new york metro city app um, it was city mapper yeah um and so there was a feature in that that helped me slingshot myself to any location in the world that was a very interesting animation i would say uh, because i you i could slingshot myself into paris into japan but eventually it was distracting me from the main objective and i was lost on that screen for like 5 10 minutes so comment about those things how you feel about it and how it can reduce the kind of distraction that it's bringing it in already um does the animation is meaningful to the functional design what are the gestures required to interact with the app what is the channel of interaction employed by the app uh, how are you supposed to touch it uh, any voice gesture any device movement uh, and are there any wow factors for example here i picked up an example of interaction design of swiggy so after placing the order it shows you this kind of animation with which kind of brings delight and it's not distracting so point that out and tell how that is bringing a feeling of delight to the users i'd like to pause here and ask if you have any questions or any doubt oh i have actually a few questions uh, so my first question is like do we need to uh, select a user journey first and then start an app critique or do we critique the app as a whole we will get into that a oh. very good questions we will get into that okay and just another question uh, so uh, you know when you spoke about colors and the ui design i feel that that is something which is pretty subjective so how do you go about articulating all these subjective critiques which you give to you know be very very about negative critiques mm -hmm. only comment something negative when you are 100% sure so for example if the color color contrast is low and you can see it you have to comment on it because it shows that you are interested about accessibility mm -hmm. but say you don't like a color so you just don't say maybe a different color would have been good yeah i can yeah. understand what is the reason behind that color for example red is generally a color that evokes a sign of warning mm -hmm. it has different connotations too that parameta will discuss later so mm -hmm. basically get strong with your color theory why a particular represent a color represents and what it represents so for example blue tries to bring along trust so you see most of the banking applications use the color blue yeah if you notice something like that do point it out but if you are not sure restrain yourself mm -hmm. okay thank you no problem okay uh i know you that that was a lot of information and you might be freaking out already because that is so much to cater to but you don't have to be an expert at everything uh just take a pause and analyze how the app is going even the basic knowledge of each domain so you comment uh, comment about ui design once or twice and you also focus on navigation and a few other things so even if you miss out on others that's okay just having a knowledge of everything helps you a lot because it gives you a wide spectrum of tools that you can use to critique the app 
now the approach i think this ties down to what the question was asked um there are three main approaches to app critique one is app driven the second one is persona or feature driven and the third one is problem driven app driven is basically what um, you can do normally uh, it's a very basic form of um, feedback or critique where you choose a app and you go screen by screen so basically here in the picture if you see i start from the home screen here and then i go to the category screen or sign up screen and then comment on each screen as i encounter them so questions that you can expect there are uh, change of recent visual design or branding what are your thoughts on the home screen what are your thoughts on the add to cart screen what are your thoughts on the search bar here so these kind of questions based on the screens you might expect uh, to get from the interviewer the approach is pretty broad and you're not focusing on one single task so you can expect questions from anywhere around the corner the second one is persona or feature driven so basically here the focus is to discuss a feature so what is a persona the first thing to know is a persona is a hi-fi term of a user um you define a user category and then remember the time when i was talking about primary and secondary user you pick a user and then you pick a a whole process of the user for example here in the right side i um, maybe i go through uh, the flow of creating a playlist on spotify and sharing it with a friend so you are entering the app with a purpose now you go through that flow and then point out the flaw, flaws in that flow so that is the second approach it's not as broad it's a bit scoped down but it still gives you the flexibility of commenting around and using that uh, framework that we talked about the third one is problem driven here we narrow down the critique session to a specific problem or use case uh, either you can go ahead and pick the problem or the interviewer can ask you that problem it can be le led by you or the interviewer as i mentioned so for example uh, you found it difficult to check menu for restaurants in yelp because some xyz reason go through the flow and while you go through that flow you can say this is how i'll improve it and propose a solution so maybe so it's all about a problem for example i find it difficult to uh, highlight uh, keep a track of highlights on my medium articles and i wanted to curate based on the category so how do you go about that go through the flow of highlighting it uh, an article on medium then how you curate that and how you revisit revisit that and point out solutions that you might think might be a good option so that is the third approach this one is extremely narrowed down so uh, we move from a broad range which is app driven uh then we got into persona driven or feature driven and then we got into the problem driven so it's either up to you of what you choose if it's left uh, open ended by the interviewer or you can go ahead and um or the interviewer gives you a problem so it can go either way now uh, we are going into the practice session let's do an exercise together to retain what we learned uh the more you practice the more you learn and parumita will take you through an app critique session over to you parumita thanks padma um so yeah the how it would work out is i will be primarily sharing my app uh, screen and we'll go through an app together but um, i'm not perfect so i will need your inputs in doing this critique um fatima before that let's just jump into one one of the slides that we have here yeah so a few things before we start uh, the main purpose of the app critique is for the interviewers to gauge how you think as a designer so really there are no right or wrong answers but try to go through uh, a lot of the things that you've learned in design and all of the things that ebay and fatima have pointed out and really um pay specific attention to things that you would necessarily value in design and that would um, really help you reflect who you are as a designer and how you think critically the second thing is uh, you don't have to just speak endlessly try to have a conversation with the other person in the room maybe ask them their thoughts or if there is a specific flow they want to explore with you maybe have their suggestions uh, in that conversation um and finally the third thing is just practice uh, that is the that is something that helps a lot and um going in with a framework is really important because if you get an app that you've never practiced before having a framework will help you organize your thoughts and go through any app uh, 
very nicely and um, or in an organized way so um for today uh, we're going to be doing an app critique for doordash i hope uh, many of you have uh, used or explored this app before um so yeah give me a thumbs up or something if you've used doordash before while i open my um screen okay we need to people <laughs> if you haven't used doordash uh, that's okay if you have used any food delivery app that helps yeah yeah so going by the um the structure the first thing you really need to look at is giving an overview of the app what the app does and what problem it's solving so if anyone wants to jump in telling to tell me what is the problem that doordash is solving and what it does anyone i guess what problem they're trying to solve is for people for to del to deliver food to homes for people who cannot physically go and get food yeah yeah dena yes you're right a uh, food delivery of any restaurant yeah so the main problem that it's solving is delivering food to people but really if you think a little bit uh, of the backdrop before any food delivery apps ever existed how you would generally place order is call a restaurant or ask the specific restaurant to deliver your order and then they would arrange their own employees to deliver your order and um that is how it worked out uh, the problem with that was it was a mismatch of demand and supply each restaurant did not have enough uh, people to uh, you know deliver the app and do that in a timely manner so speed was also a problem and when doordash came in it basically offered a service where uh, people could select any of the local restaurants and they tied up with those restaurants to just offer delivery and they do it through people who they call dashers so that's overview of what the app does what the problem it solves I don't know why it stopped sharing. One second. So uh, next the, question. Uh, by yeah. the time you can have a look at the framework that we will follow for the app critique uh, in the chat section, I've posted. So as Paromita speaks, you can follow along, and then you'll know how she is critiquing on each one of the points in the app. Yeah. So next question is: What are the primary and secondary users of the app? Anybody? the primary users i guess are the people who wish to place an order as well as the uh, food chain owners who would take the orders and secondary users probably can be the people who would deliver the orders mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah are sure you yeah. the same app or they have a different app for this yeah got of your right um yeah so main users primary users um people who are placing the order they want to order food and then secondary uh, people would users would include the dashers so doordash has another app which the dashers use primarily and they also have um the restaurants who they tie up with uh, as their secondary users um so i guess now we are in the app so let's just explore around um the first thing is to just go through the app take some time uh, so i'll um navigate through the app and maybe you all can like have a look at it once and then i'll go deeper into critiquing it so this is the first uh, delivery page of the app then we have a pickup app a uh, pickup screen right here with a map and then restaurants nearby we have a search then we have orders and then we have account so you've looked around a little bit and now uh, the first thing that you can comment on is the structure and the navigation of the app so clearly um the main way that the navigation happens in this app is through the bottom bar 
and it has five main categories delivery pickup search orders and account um and when you look into the delivery page the first thing at the top that you see is a horizontal scroll navigation now why this is uh, there one thing that it is helping do is improve the discoverability of different types of cuisines that are available on DoorDash. So as the users hop into the app, they can quickly navigate. Maybe they're in a mood of Chinese or maybe something healthy. So this thing is helpful. Um, one drawback to it is that because there are so many cuisines, it could be a lot of scrolling. So we've com commented on that a little bit. And then when we look at the filters, which is again, another horizontal scroll, you see a bunch of filters again to help narrow down on your search since DoorDash has so many different offer uh, or options. It's easier to you know have something in mind and then able to filter out. So maybe let's see this filter in specific. Um, so, does anyone want to comment on the design of this filter in specific? What do you guys think of it? I think it is very simple and intuitive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, like single dollar, double dollar, then like triple dollar, that is like indicative enough of showing the price range. So, right. yeah, and it, it is the easiest way to represent it, I guess very simple mm -hmm. i i think it is pretty a little vague because like i know that it's uh, like expensive and like most expensive but i'm not just understanding what the price range is like if i have to order food you know maybe something which is uh two dollars might be in my budget you know like I, i'm just Dang not on. getting the yeah. range of uh, mm -hmm. like the prices which are there so i think exactly. like this navigation is pretty vague i think Definitely, for sure, Simran, I think you're bang on on this. So even though this is a very simplistic, minimal design, um, the drawback to this is that it is very contextual in nature. Uh, maybe for someone, $2 means it's too expensive. And like you don't really have a specific range in mind. So maybe a better alternative would be having a price range with actual numbers rather than just these icons. So that's something that you can look at. Let me quickly see the chat if we have something. Mm -hmm. So there's some comments on the visual design, uh, not enough breathing space for the menu price. Yeah, um, so a very good uh, solution for this, I think is uh, in the Zomato app uh, that I used to use back in India. For every restaurant, it used to provide me meal for two cost. So how much two people uh, can easily eat at that rest restaurant would cost gives me a clear indicator of how expensive the restaurant is. So if it's maybe $10 meal for two, it's cheap. If it's 25, it's okay. If it's $100, it's not okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's move on. Um, let's look at the visual design before we go into a flow. So the visual design is a lot of different restaurants chunked by different uh, categories, special offers, popular restaurants, etc. If you look at the visual design, um, DoorDash primary uh, brand color is red. Uh, we would assume that is to signify hunger. And that is why they have this red color uh, popping uh, on the app. But when you look at the app from a more bird's eye view, most of the interface is uh, white and gray um, with the specific focus on imagery. The reason why they're focused on imagery is because this gives more visual context uh, with respect to the restaurant, the food, and really uh, they want the users to be more focused on the food rather than the actual design of the app. Um, also, let's dive into like one of the maybe categories maybe i want to explore now on doordash um so now let's go into one of the flows i want to order food from one of the restaurants so we'll go through how we select uh, one of the restaurants and then till uh, adding to cart because i'm not going to order right now so um let's see this is a list of all the um, restaurants 
and one thing that i'm seeing here with respect to the card design um there's a good hierarchy with respect to the restaurant name it is bolded out and um that is uh, helping me separate that information from the bottom information but one of the things that is a little bit more tricky is the um uh, is the um description so where it says american sandwich salads the text is cutting off and this is not very intuitive or contextual for me so um what i would recommend is have a specific um space where all of the words are covered rather than having this cut out words which is a little bit difficult to read and really it's less contextual in nature so maybe i want to order from here let's go into the uh, actual restaurant page um so uh, the thing that i really like here is uh, they have like a fun little layout uh, on the top with this imagery which is really attracting to the eyes and then when you look at the type setting of this page the restaurant name is again big font size very bold and um also they've really clearly highlighted the delivery fee and the time taken for delivery this is good because this is providing more transparency to users with respect to how long the order would take and what your delivery fee would be so it's really nice that they've bolded it out and then they have it enclosed if, uh, inside a rectangle um and then when you go uh, down you have a lot of different featured uh, app uh, items and then a full menu with uh, all the different items yeah <laughs> i made sure i had food before so that i'm less hungry <laughs> okay um so yeah again uh, with respect to all of these lists they've clearly had a good visual hierarchy with respect to the title of the food item and then a little bit of a description followed by the price and then when you tap at one of the items it pulls out as a bottom sheet or an action sheet uh, depending on if it is an iOS or a um an android phone that you're using so one thing that i missed you have to mention in the starting that you are using an iOS app um my bad but yeah you have to do that and so yeah i think this interaction is really clean and it pulls up from the bottom so you can still see um and easily navigate to the uh, whole restaurant and see preview the uh, thing that you want to order um so again for adding to the cart um they have a big down red button a clear call to action which i think is really good it also tells you the price um so let's see once we add this to the cart um this a uh, sticky uh, floating uh, button appears for the cart so what is your opinion on this floating action button for the cart any thoughts uh i think it's good that it is floating and it's sticky it just gives me an idea of you know what is added into the cart but mm -hmm. i think that i don't understand what is the total quantity sorry uh, the price what is there like the total price in the cart so i think that is something which is probably in because i you know when i add something to a cart i would want to know what is my total price mm -hmm. right I think I have two concerns regarding this floating button. Mm -hmm. One, since we have like a lot of visual images, very rare, but there's a possibility that it might blend into those images, and not we might not be able to mm -hmm. recognize it distinctly. And secondly, you know, it's like the trend, which is usually cut on the top right, yeah. so people might go and expect it there. Yeah. I think you all uh, made great points and I would agree even though this floating action button is good and it kind of collapses on the right side to you know be less obstructive uh, and it is sticky on all of the uh, things that you all of the navigation that you do 
but yes it blocks off uh, the things that are behind it and sometimes it can merge in because of the imagery so really great points there um so i think i do want to point out one more thing um which i noticed in one of the okay let's add this yeah so now let's go to the cart um so in the cart um i think it's pretty straightforward you see your uh, order that you added and then you also have um a little bit of a navigation with respect to what other people added um it's not visible in this specific restaurant but one dark pattern that i noticed uh, was one of the restaurants had uh, a menu item listed at 0 dollars and it showed me right here where people also ordered uh, options are there and it mentioned 0 dollars and when i clicked on it it showed me um, you need to select one of the required options and that was 3 dollars so really that is a dark ux pattern Uh, where they're luring users to see, oh, this is a free item, and then eventually you need to select one less compulsory option to make it to three dollars. And this is, I would say, more towards the ethical side, where you want to comment on, and it can differentiate you as a designer when you notice these things. So yeah, that was the the add to cart flow. Now let's go into some of the other um, pages of the app. this is the pickup screen um again it has a map at the top and the restaurants at the bottom um i like the fact that they have these filters at the top it maintains a little bit more consistency with respect to the filters in the delivery and uh the thing on the map um even though it is a nice thing if you're around the area and you want to quickly see what uh, restaurants are around um at this view it's a little bit tricky to understand you can't see all the restaurant names and you, a lot of them are overlapping so that's one thing that um is a little tricky about having this map um when you go into search again uh, they have a dedicated search this is primarily i think to improve the discoverability and findability of products but um i want to notice this search bar uh, at the top so if you look at the design of the search bar um it has a corner radius but primarily it's like a rectangular uh, search bar and then when you compare it with the search bar on the pickup app a pickup screen this is completely rounded so there is a visual inconsistency that you're seeing here and ideally um i would say that a design system really helps maintain that consistency um and yeah as fatima said the contrast is also pretty low for the search bar so the the text at the top is a darker gray and then the background is a lighter gray and for uh, some people it might be a little harder to read it um so now let's go into the orders um screen um maybe one thing i want to point out here is the help option so usually when you're doing a food ordering um customer support should be a an easier flow i would say because often times you might have some problem with your order or it has been del uh, delayed or maybe you did not get the correct order so ideally um it should be easier to access with lesser clicks but here um you have to go into your orders and then you go into your specific order then you go into help and then you have to select one of the options from these so after you do that is when you are able to you know contact for customer support and start a chat which i feel is a longer flow than uh, expected also on this screen let's talk the type setting talk about the type setting and the visual hierarchy a little bit um i would point out that some of this text especially um the the paragraph about the credits the text is 
very small font and it is lighter gray in color so with respect to accessibility some people with color blindness or vision issues uh, it would be particularly hard for them to read this text and also the fact that uh, the alignment of this amount card is a little off and the line spacing between them is very little is causing it to look more cluttered in nature so yeah i think i covered a lot of the things and you all gave me great great insights but let's see i i'll stop here and i would ask what all things do you think you noticed and um, take your opinions yeah mayur um, i think it is a good thing if you can offer your suggested alternative it helps uh, the interviewers to know what other things and options you're thinking about and what patterns you already know about so definitely a good uh, way to do it okay anyone has any other comments let's let's discuss the interaction design the animation what do you guys think of that maybe i can um you know launch the app again let's see how the splash screen and the initial animation looks like so we have a preloader and then we have this skeleton screen with lazy loading what are your thoughts on this initial animation that you saw I think it's good to have a skeleton than a blank page because I think this has happened to me when I was using YouTube, mm -hmm. and I tried opening a YouTube video and it was a blank screen, and I didn't know whether should I wait or it's a broken link. Mm -hmm. so, you know, definitely. definitely, you know, like making user expect that there's something coming up, mm -hmm. than leaving them with a question mark. Absolutely, yeah. It it helps set the context, and while the all the data in this app loads, it kind of helps uh, retain your users and help them know that okay, it's coming. So definitely a good one. This is called visibility of system status in design. Yeah, Fatima, do you want to speak on it a little bit? Yeah. So basically, in design, when you are at a particular stage. uh you expect something so a good designer always makes the user uh feel feel less anxious and anticipate what's coming next so basically visibility of this uh, system status is a principle which talks about on what screen or what page you are in you are completely aware of that for example if i am on the delivery page the delivery icon at the bottom menu is highlighted red if that would not have been highlighted red i wouldn't have known on which page i am but at this point of time i am here at the uh, delivery page that's very uh, clear to me because it's highlighted so you should uh, always try that for every screen the system status is visible to the user which means the user should know where they are and what is coming next yeah so uh, there are these uh, skeleton screens i think in most of the apps that most of the screens that take a little while to load so even in this bottom uh, uh, sheet navig um, interaction it shows a little bit of the skeleton screen or the lazy loader and then this preloader is also one of their um, methods to indicate okay the thing is loading yeah any other interactions or animations that you noticed maybe this uh, card button yeah i think okay. that is a pretty good uh, way you know like when they have expanded the cart and you know when you scroll down your attention is more towards browsing all these different 
a mm-hmm. restaurant so you know like the cart uh, like, like you don't have to pay that much attention to the cart it just sings and then just a small indication you can click on that and if you want to see more details you can do that yeah that's a great point yeah okay i think we are through most of the app and we critiqued on a lot of things like the structure the navigation the visual design animations we went through an entire flow and um, i think we covered a lot of those things that you might be, need for an app critique yeah i think one of the things um, i would recommend you specifically for interviews because i think it comes more often than you'd expect in an interview you'll be given a random a random app and you'll have to comment on it that happened for me during internships for full time both so um, what i would suggest is go through patterns have a framework ready the framework we gave might not, you if you feel it's not the perfect one for you craft a framework for yourself and have that ready so that you know okay i want to comment on this i have to comment on this i have to comment on this and get very um, very well versed with why col- what colors color theory is something that won't be taught in uh, hcid program it's something that's taught in graphic design school why which typography which is formal which one is informal which one is semi formal uh, why sans serif why serif those kind of things you should know already then um, uh, things like why use a dark mode anybody knows why use a dark mode why apps have dark modes or dark themes apart from the visual beauty it's good one yes it saves a lot of battery because the lesser pixel are ignited in dark themes so if there are apps that run in your background for a very long time say spotify it runs for a very long time uh, it has a completely dark theme you can switch to a lighter theme but they generally offer a dark theme so uh, basically having those things uh, in your backpack as a tool and then critiquing helps a lot and makes you feel more prepared and confident as a designer yeah for sure um i think also one thing i would add um especially with respect to app critiques uh usually these apps are like big apps with a lot of designers on the team so you really have to think that a lot of thought has gone behind designing this application and being mindful of that and still uh you know thinking critically and coming up with things that can be improved even further really reflects your talent as a designer so always be mindful be respectful and um again uh think critically have a framework and i think it will be really a smooth sailing boat for you once you practice there's one last thing i'd like to add it's super easy to comment on a shitty app if yeah. the, i can say three things for double maps but if you ask me to comment on google maps that's challenging so if you want to work for a bigger firm like amazon facebook microsoft you have to get into the pra- uh, practice of polish uh, like critiquing really polished work so it's hard to find flaws in the facebook app because it's been going on for years and there are i don't know how many designers behind that so get into the habit of critiquing polished apps more often Uh, I had a question. Uh, I just wanted to know how you guys practiced app critique during your interviews. Like how how did you know that you were doing it right? Uh, uh, I I would share mine and then Paramita can share hers. Uh, so what I did was uh, the first thing was I panicked, obviously. uh then the second thing that i did was i went through all the resources online and, uh, watched many youtube videos uh it was i think around last year march that i had my first internship call and the th- third round was app critique so i was all panicking then i uh, i think i took the information architecture class that helped me critique the website so i kind of translated that into app critique um watching videos helped i think at that time i was like if there would have been a framework that would have been super helpful so this ppt was a curation of our uh, whole experience uh, then what we also did was we did pair uh, critique so 
I used to sit with one of my friend and I used to critique and she used to observe. And then after the session got over, after 20, 15 minutes, she used to say, maybe you could have said this, maybe you could have said this. So that way, my knowledge increased of how I could critique more. But you have to practice a lot with your friends, uh, with anybody, any mentor that you have. There are ADP call lists for mentoring sessions with designers. Go ahead and schedule that and get into the practice of interviews. Don't wait until the last minute. The moment you wait until the last minute, that panic hits and then you mess up that process. Pa practice with some of your friends. So maybe you're browsing through an app uh, and you see, maybe we can improve this. Why not uh, just scroll a little bit more and see what else can be improved. So practice that. Yeah, I think Fatima covered a lot of the things that are important and practicing is really important. Um, I guess for, um, especially with respect to observing how, what different things you can critique on, really the two years that we've learned so much about information architecture, visual design, navigation, just keeping in mind all of those things that you've learned um, and trying to hit a lot of those things um, helps. So if, especially if you're a product designer, you will think about the visual design, the colors, you will think about accessibility and inclus inclusive design. You will think about interactions. So really, if you cover a lot of those things, you will be good to go. But yeah, uh, practicing with the ADP mentors is really helpful. I would definitely recommend that too. And yeah, don't panic. I think when you're yourself, you're at ease. You are able to think through the things a lot, lot better. So yeah, don't be nervous and just take it as a conversation. They're not judging you. You just have to be calm. Thank you for that, guys. Uh, we want to organize more events. I think next week we are organizing a design systems event where we have a panel where we have people who are very experienced with design systems who have like five years, six years experience with design systems. So they are very senior people in the industry. And if you really want to know how design system work, what are the challenges, what are the nitty gritty, they might be so much better than us. So I would encourage all of you to attend that. Uh, that would be our finale event of the year as uh, a web design team, me, Parumita and eBay. We'll have a new team on board soon, but uh, do plan to attend that if you have time. Yeah, and if you're interested in joining the team, uh, definitely apply, the applications are open now. Um, and yeah, if you all have any other questions about app critiques, uh, we do have some more time. And I'll also post the design system invite uh, in the chat if you want to sign up for that event. It's next week on Friday at 2 p.m. EST. I had a question about uh, design critique. So uh, when there is a design critique round, uh, are you given an app to choose by yourself or they assign an app for you to critique and how much time are you given to think for yourself and go through that before you can start the critique? I think uh, generally, um, first you will be told in advance that this round will be an app critique round. So you will have time to be prepared and have that context, okay, I'm going to do an app critique. So it will be helpful for you to prepare the framework in advance. But from my experience, usually they just uh, either give you an app of their choice that maybe they have been using, not that it belongs to the company, but maybe they use, or sometimes maybe they will ask you one of the apps that you want to do, but generally it's them who give it on the spot. Okay. Fatima, anything you want to add? Uh, it's very subjective to, sorry. It's very subjective to the interviewer. Uh, yeah. For my first interview, they picked usertesting.com uh, as yeah. the website critique, uh, similar to app critique, um, for mm -hmm. which I had to go on the spot and critique that. So I took a couple of minutes, paused, went through that, asked them, what is this for? What are, What is the functionality of the website? And I went ahead mm -hmm. with that. For the second one, I think um, a company asked me to pick an app. That's my most favorite. So for the most favorite app, you should be very well versed. So if I say, what is your most favorite app? It's not happening that you don't say, okay, I don't know which app is my most favorite. You should have favorite apps that you can critique. So prepare your mind for your most favorite app 
and then look through what you can go ahead with. So maybe it's Google Maps, maybe it's Spotify, maybe it's YouTube music. For me, it's YouTube music. Go through that. Uh, another thing that I would want to add here is um, when you pick that app, uh, there are cases or there are chances where uh, the person might be, I think we already covered that in the deck, on the other platform. So always mention that you are critiquing it, critiquing it for iOS or Android. Right. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? Also, like generally, how much time do they give you to critique? 15 minutes? 15 minutes is a bit less. I think 20 minutes. 20 to 30 oh, okay. minutes. 30 minutes caps. Yeah. I think for one of my interviews, I only had 15 minutes, but it was a combination of like, um, it was a 45 minutes interview where the last half was an app critique. So it depends if it is a uh, combination of different agendas or if it is specifically app critique in that case I think 30 minutes tops would be uh, the round okay thank you uh, also I do want to add please give us feedback um, we're almost nearing the end but uh, again feedback is really helpful to pass it on to the next team and then we'll be able to plan out events for the next team um, um, accordingly so please give us feedback and if you have any thoughts about how you found the event please feel free to jump in come off mute that'll be really helpful Okay, I think then in that case, we can call off the event. Thank you so much, everybody for coming in and uh, participating. I hope this was helpful. Um, we have gone through interviews and therefore we wanted to help you out with this. Uh, we will be sharing uh, the recording of this by next week maximum. Um, yeah. And yeah, hope to see you in the next event. Yeah, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Hope to see you in the next Design Systems event. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.